Welcome to Author Mama Reads, where I give you my very first impressions of all the books I read. Today's book, The Centurion's Wife by Janet Oak and Davis Dunn. I just started chapter six and I, I the problem that I keep having is wondering what's going on. Um, there's some intrigue she's pulling into this and I'm just having a little bit of a difficult time following it. Um, I, I like it when things aren't spelled out in books, like, and it could be him, John Murphy. <laughs> like, that's a little too spelled out, but when it's like, and it could be him, but then I, it's not even alluded to, and I don't actually even know who the him is, and then they leave it, then I am a little bit in the dark and then I do want a little more information than that. So, um, it's coming, it's coming just a little bit late, so I always feel like a step behind, and not necessarily in a good way, but I, I think I like it overall. Ooh, I just read the part where the Centurion's talking to um, Linux, and they're having this conversation about Jesus's crucifixion. Oh my gosh, it's, it's, I, I know we can't really know what was talked about or anything like that, but I can really imagine this conversation happening and I, I love the biblical ties that they're bringing in and that this is the centurion that Jesus um, he healed his servant. So anyway, I like that. My eyes are all fuzzy. I need to stop. Um, also, my daughter wants to play the Kindle, so I need to give back. Even though it's mine. <laughs> They stole it. Okay, so what I I have a book club tomorrow, and since we're all quarantined, um, this is April 9th, 2020. For anybody who comes across this video later, remember the great quarantine of 2020, the great pandemic. So we have a Zoom-based uh, book club that we're going to do since we can't meet, um, and it's tomorrow. And I read a bunch of other books, but not the one I was supposed to read for book club. So I am zooming through this one. And one of the things I will say is that I'm skimming a lot. Partly because I need to have it done. I want to have it done before the meeting tomorrow evening. And I can read a book pretty fast. Um, and partly because it's easy to skim. There's there's a couple pages, at least in Kindle um, you know, version of pages, um, that you can skim fairly easily. Uh, just talking about the countryside or or describing battlements or the the palace where pilots staying um certain things like that so um on the one hand you can skim it pretty easily because you're not going to miss anything super important on the other hand it is fairly interesting enough that if i had the time i would probably sit and and read all of that so I'm not skimming because it's boring. Leah is continually over and over referred to as an intelligent woman, um, even by someone who hasn't spoken to her other than to say hello. So someone says, do you know anything about her? Oh, only that she's an extremely intelligent woman. Have you spoken to her? No, just, just you know, to say hello. And so I'm just wondering why She's so intelligent. I wish that they would just give a little bit more into that. Like, she made an intelligent decision by taking care of a slave, which endeared her to the household, I suppose. But that's the only thing they've alluded to. So I don't... Maybe they just thought that was a very intelligent move on her part. So I hope to see a little more of her actual intelligence in her decisions. So... I can understand a little bit more about her personality and then also about the men. I don't know. I feel like in their conversations, I'm left to wonder whether they're being humorous or serious. I was like, was he, was he joking? He seems to be, but it's hard to picture. So I'm sort of left to like reread that paragraph and then just decide for myself how I feel like that came across, which, you know, you don't want to be told how to feel necessarily, but like, I also want to know what their personalities are like. And I mean, I could make something up, but that might not be what the author intends. So. Mm -hmm. All right, um, 
In fact, his entire person seemed to have collapsed in on itself. <coughs> I like that line. Nothing's happening. It's kind of frustrating. Oh, there's these chapters where it's all small talk. And some of it's important and mostly it's not. And even though they made the small talk, I guess the important part that they wanted you to hear because they were discussing Jesus and stuff about him. I just a lot of the sections are feeling not necessarily filled with important things and there's not very much dialogue. Far, far more narrative. Also, 48% through the book, according to Kindle, and the male protagonist and female protagonist have still not met. I'm not sure what to say or where to begin, except that I loved this book as much as I didn't like this book. It was such a paradox for me. It has nearly every element that I, well not nearly every element, but it has a lot of what I just do not enjoy in a novel. And yet, so much of what I did that even though I didn't want to read it sometimes, I kept being pulled back. So it was just so confusing to my head. Let me just start with um, what I didn't like about it, just to get that out of the way, because I want to say what I did like about it. Um, what I don't like about it is that there's a lot of description. Um, I, th I thought at first that I wouldn't mind reading the description if I had the time and opportunity. Um, actually, my book club was canceled. Um, not enough people had read the book, <laughs> so we had to put it off. Um, and so I had longer to read it, and so I did try to read more of it, but then I found that I still wanted to skim, and I would just look for the dialogue. Um, I, I don't think I can say the bad things without saying the good things. So the, the, the bad part is, is that there was a lot of detail, like a lot of detail where I just, I, I personally love good dialogue. I want to read it and I want to like get into it and I want to, I'm a character driven kind of girl. And um, so, but, but at the same time, the descriptions were so vivid and so amazing about um, Jerusalem that I just thought this, the author had to have been there. And sure enough, at the end of the book, it does say that Davis Dunn visited Israel for nearly two weeks to do his research. So that is amazing. Um, the descriptions of like the the palaces, like um, Herod's palace, or did they talk about Herod? Well, they did talk about Herod. I'm trying to think now. Um, there was a lot of description about Pontius Pilate's palace, um, or even just terrain um, in the area. So it's hard to criticize it. It's it's just generally my own opinion that I don't care to read huge amounts of description with no dialogue. But the description that was there was very well written and very informative and um, very vivid. So, I mean, that was just opinion and so I, I, can't, I can't really criticize it too much. Um, now let's get to the dialogue. Uh, I skimmed to the dialogue. <laughs> so the dialogue was incredibly sparse and whenever they did talk, it was, I wonder if Davis was the one who actually wrote out the male dialogue. It was very to the point, no frills. Uh, I, you know, it may be just the way a man would speak, like a, like a military person, just no extra. Um, so it made the dialogue on the one hand very bland. So I didn't care for that. Um, but then on the other hand, uh, it was very to the point. There was no wasted dialogue. <laughs> there was nothing that didn't make sense. It was fairly realistic dialogue if you just have a very, um, uh, what would you call it? Like soft-spoken person or just matter-of-fact person. That was his personality. Um, so there's not a lot of criticize there either because what dialogue was there was perfectly fine. Um, the one thing about the dialogue that I, I don't remember if I stated it earlier or not, was that it always seemed to me that they didn't necessarily get to the point or all of their points were really the small talk before getting to the point and then they'd get to the point and then they'd end the chapter. 
So that was kind of a source of frustration at first. Another um, major contention I had in the book at first can be kind of summed up in one of the reviewers. His name is TJ McKay, is what he went under. Um, FYI, there was a lot of male reviewers on this book. It seemed like a lot of male readers, and maybe that was because of Davis. Maybe they were uh, some of his uh, book fans. I'm not sure. So um, he says, one's opinion of this book will be directly related to one's expectations of this book. This makes it a very difficult one to review. I completely, completely agree with that. It, I disliked it until my expectations changed. He says that he does not think this is a plot driven book. I disagree. Um, I actually think it's very much a plot driven book. Um, and the reason for that disagreement is, let me just read you the definition, character driven, focuses on the inner conflict of the characters that you've created. If you choose to use this writing style, your reader will spend time thinking about the characters and their attitudes, personal evolution and decisions, and how those in turn change the shape of the plot and the story as a whole. I was frustrated because I like character driven books. I really, really do. And uh, my books are very heavily character driven. So. I was looking for that those changes in the characters. I was waiting for them to get together. For goodness sake, half the book before they even met the lo the love interest. So in my mind, although this this book had this uh, biblical setting, and although it, w it had to do with the centurion trying to track down um, witnesses to Christ's death or resurrection, to learn out and um, the truth of what happened to him, and then report that back to Pilate. I kept in my head thinking this was a romance and that why aren't they spending more time together, the two characters, and so it was a f frustration to me until it like snapped. This is really a plot driven book. The whole point of the story is not necessarily they're getting together. It's the road they're on. It, it is them finding out about Jesus, finding out that he is alive and finding out whether they are going to follow him or not and whether he has granted them faith. And huh, once that switched over, I was really able to enjoy it. I was really able to enjoy it. Then the characters, it really didn't matter what happened to the characters and together, I mean, it was a nice, but it, it didn't matter as much because each of them had to find Jesus. And, and since that is what was happening, it, it changed everything for me. It says plot driven. Plot driven stories, on the other hand, place a larger emphasis on the actual plot itself. Factors such as plot twists, action, and external conflicts are what make up the focus of the story of writing. In most cases, the goals of the story are more external in that they are focused on the development of a situation. In truth, it was probably, this book was probably a little bit of both because it's not completely, completely character driven. I mean, plot driven. It, it talked about like, Kind of it's like two people getting on a roller coaster and they're just taken wherever the plot goes um there was no roller coaster rise in this there was not that exciting um in terms of energy or or um intrigue at first but still they're on the road to find jesus and really that takes them everywhere in this book they th their road is not towards each other so much as to find the truth of jesus so that that is my opinion so i want to read some reviews to you and then s just kind of um give my responses to some of the reviews there this is 79 percent for five stars 16 percent for four stars three percent for three stars one percent one percent for two and one stars so by and large, this was a very popular book. Christine, someone named Christina Marie says um, that they stopped after the, after the first few chapters, boring, too long, getting to the point. Um, this was the main thrust of all of the one and two star reviews, especially the one star, is slow going, didn't hold them, wasn't their style, horrible editing in the Kindle version. It was a little weird. You could tell there was some things going on, like hiccups in the you know, in the visual uh, grammar or something like a hyphen stuck in there, or like the paragraph messed up. But I just, honestly, that's just a loading error. That probably the writer didn't do that. Um, 
two confused customers were lost in the one star reviews. <laughs> they gave one stars, but they both said they couldn't put it down and they enjoyed it very much. So, I don't know, somehow they got lost there. Do I agree with these? Like I said earlier, my initial reaction to the book was to agree with these, that it was slow, um, that it wasn't my style. But once I changed my expectations, um, those changed for me as well. I feel like going up, even with the two and three star reviewers, they seem to give it a little bit more consideration. They seem to acknowledge it's not just slow, it's just not my style. Um, Cause I, I think it's hard to say that this isn't a good book. I really do. Um, some of the comments. While the content is okay, the pace is slow for my liking, well researched but needed something, just couldn't connect with the characters, written with, written with hard to understand plot, I found this book to be somewhat lacking. It was interesting enough, I guess. It just seemed anticlimactic for me. One five-star review said, far better than the best of movies, and I love a good movie. And that was really sweet. Um, and I have to agree. I think this would make a fantastic movie. I, there's not a lot in inside the heads of the characters, or rather, Sometimes making a book into a movie is difficult, let me say that, because there's a lot said inside the character's head that might not be able to be projected outside of themselves in the movie. Maybe they have to have extra dialogue added in or something to um, <clears throat> allow people to understand what the character is feeling. I don't feel like that. I feel like this could be very easily made into a movie and that it's just straightforward and what they say is what they say and and you just, you want to see it, pant, you know, played out. So I would love for this to be a movie. I would love for this to be a movie. <laughs> okay. I think it would be great. One four star reviewed. Um, this is a good Christian historical fiction. Authors have relied on scriptural accuracy and woven an enjoyable read. Leading from the crucifixion of Christ to Pentecost, I read Matthew's and Mark's gospel accounts alongside the book, and it enhanced my understanding and appreciation of what very, of what were very believable scenarios of the first stirrings of what would become Christianity. I love the fact that this book ended at Pentecost. It just, it was beautiful. I mean, it brought me to tears. It was probably the first time in my life that I could actually maybe guess at what that could have been like um r like realistically take a little guess into that and I don't know if they were anywhere close but the emotions that they felt um the two characters felt being accepted by Christ seeing the flame of fire above each other's heads and um Especially the centurion who really doubted whether he was going to be accepted into the faith because he believed, but he wasn't Jewish. And there was still a lot of the Jewish people who were rejecting him. Like they wouldn't let him go and sacrifice at the temple or make an offering. And so he, he saw these flames of fire coming above other heads. But then when um, the, the female character came to him, she was like, look it, you're accepted. And it was above his head and I'm gonna cry again. It was just beautiful, that, that's all. I wanna just read you a couple of my favorite quotes from the book. I, I loved the, just the biblical um, truths that they put in there. Okay, um, one of them was a quote. How else can we be reconciled except one individual at a time? This Jesus you seek did not come to address nations. He washed the wounds of lepers. He dined with sinners. He healed all who came to him, one person at a time. Um, another one said, She would not be a Judean today and a Gentile tomorrow. It was all or nothing at all. Um, I just like these themes. They're very solid. My dear one, you already believe. What you want to do now is follow. And to me, that's very personal. Because what do you do with belief? And you know, James talks about that. You have outward actions that show you belief. And so there was this point to which both um, Leah and Albin believed, but they didn't know what to do with that. And there were people that came alongside them that kind of, now you need to follow. What, what comes next? What comes along with belief? Um, Jesus was alive and deserved unwavering allegiance. 
I love that too. Alvin had, you know, I'm just going to go to that really quickly. It says, a soldier's task was to read the terrain, ferret out an enemy or risk and conquer both, but he no longer knew who or where the enemy was. Only on one point was he certain Jesus was alive and deserved unwavering allegiance. And this was Albin's character's uh, dilemma, was he was a Roman soldier. And who was his allegiance to? And so there was a struggle for him. Um, and I, but it was just so good. It's funny because I say that and still it's got almost every <laughs> literary <laughs> um, detail or things I don't like about it. Like I would never choose a book that had this misdescription and so little dialogue. And, but I have to love it because at the end of it all, it played over and over in my head and I chewed on it and chewed on it and couldn't let it go. So I can only conclude that it was an amazing book. Um, I don't know if this is indicative of Davis Dunn's writing in general. Uh, I know I enjoy Janet Oak's writing, so I don't know. Um, if it was just this book and the plot that they wanted to get across that made it so descriptive. I don't know what their other writing is like, but I would definitely read something by Davis Dunn to see. And of course I would continue with Janet Oak because she's just amazing. <laughs> so anyway, I just can't say enough about it, even though I didn't like most of it. <laughs> Even though I skimmed most of it. I think you should read it for the experience. Read it for the experience. Just see. You gotta read it once. You just gotta read it once. It's kind of like The Passion. You read, the, you watch The Passion and it's so dramatic. It's so uh, intense. But if you ever try watching it again, which when I do, I have to fast forward it through parts. I, I, I can barely stand to watch most of it anymore. It's just so hard. Do you remember when everyone went in The Passion? And then your friends would come out and you'd be like, was it great? Was it so amazing? And then they're like, yeah, yeah, it was, that was good. <laughs> and you're like, what? And then you'd go in and then you watched it and then you felt, you knew, you understood. This was heavy. Um, and, and, but when you, when you watch it a second or third time, it's, it's actually a very slow movie. It's a very slow, it's just all dramatic and for the first time effect of seeing it. Um, this book to me was, it's kind of like a very slow book in some ways, but you'll be glad you read it. You'll be glad you read it. Just like you're glad you watched The Passion, you watched it the once, no more. Read this book and, and you may be one of those people that love it and will read it every year right before Easter. I actually, I hate calling it Easter. I actually finished this book the day before Resurrection Sunday and then watched The Passion with my husband on Resurrection Day. Um, and so you may be one of those people who will just be like, yeah, Resurrection Day's coming up. I'm gonna read that book again. Or you may be one person who reads it and then says, great, that's amazing. I will never read that book again. But, you're, but you will be glad you did. I really think you will be glad you did. Let, keep an open mind, switch your expectations, and, and, and I think you will enjoy this book. The next book I'm reading will be by Robin Lee Hatcher, so be prepared for that, and I will see you next time.